Preventing Microbiological Contamination Now that we understand what microbiological contamination is, let's have a look at ways to prevent or limit microbiological contamination in our kitchens. As you'll remember, the biggest cause of contamination is microbiological, and in particular, bacteria. So if we can deal with microbiological contamination well, we are a very long way into ensuring that our kitchens are safe and healthy. Let's start with the supplier. To ensure that food is completely safe, you need to start at the source of the food, which in many cases is the supplier. No matter how cleanly you work, or how much you follow the correct procedures, if your supplier stores the food incorrectly, or if the food is exposed to cross-contamination, your food will already be infected before it even arrives at your kitchen. So, when choosing a supplier, it is advisable to find out where the products come from, how they are grown or prepared, and how they are transported. You need to ensure that your supplier follows the same hygienic principles as your establishment does, and you should not be willing to accept any food that you think has been compromised from your supplier. Now let's look at the transference of bacteria, or moving bacteria from one source to another. It is important to understand that bacteria cannot move on their own. They must be carried by something that will transfer them from one item to another. These can include hands, cuts, burns, the food itself, the equipment and utensils that we use, the air, water, birds and animals, and also waste and soil. All of these items can transfer bacteria from one item to the other. Some foods are more likely to transfer bacteria, such as poultry, meat, eggs, fish and vegetables. So we need to be extra careful with these items. Now let's look at your hygiene. Any surface or area with which food comes into contact needs to be clean and hygienic. This starts with you. You need to ensure that your person and your uniform are clean and hygienic at all times. When working with or around food, you need to wash your hands regularly, particularly after every task that you complete and especially after coughing or sneezing. Keep yourself healthy. This is a very important part of keeping the food you prepare healthy. If you are feeling sick or ill, it is your responsibility to let your managers know, since your illness may be contagious. In other words, you could also make your guests and colleagues sick by handling their food and spreading germs to the food that they are about to eat. Next, we have to look at food preparation areas. The environments in which food is transported, stored, handled and cooked needs to be brilliantly clean and hygienic at all times. This includes the surroundings, such as the floors, the walls, the shelves, and cooling areas, and also the equipment that you use to prepare the food. Think of putting a lovely clean piece of meat onto a very, very dirty floor. Would you eat that? Absolutely not. The same goes when thinking about your food preparation areas. Cooked and uncooked foods need to be stored separately to prevent those germs or pathogens in the one from spreading to the other item. Since both cooked 
and raw foods will be present in the kitchen at any given time, you need to assign separate boards and knives to be used for raw and cooked foods so that the equipment doesn't transfer bacteria from one to the other. The typical example is preparing raw red meat on a red board with a red knife and preparing cooked meat on a brown board with a brown knife. Although your colors may be different in your establishment, it shows how important it is to use separate boards and knives for raw and cooked foods alike. Also, assign particular boards to the different food types and always, always, always use these boards with the correct foods. This will prevent bacteria from spreading from the food to the board and then from that board to other types of food. An example of the color coding system is as follows. A red board for raw meat. A brown board for cooked meat. A blue board for fish. A yellow board for raw poultry. A green board for vegetables and fruit and a whiteboard for dairy products. Ensure that spoiled or off food and rubbish or refuse are removed from areas in which the food is stored and that you dispose of all of your waste correctly and hygienically. All the time this will avoid cross-contamination and it will stop you from spreading and multiplying harmful bacteria in your kitchens. Refuse and waste in the cooking environment can also attract pests such as rats, mice and cockroaches that can contaminate food. No smoking, eating or drinking should ever take place in food preparation areas. This can cause bacteria to be transferred from your mouth and your fingers to the food you are preparing. Make sure that you clean as you go to ensure that all of your surfaces stay clean throughout the day. Let's have another look at preventing microbiological contamination. We saw that microbiological contamination can be prevented in six ways. Can you remember all six? Grab your pen and paper and try to write them down on a piece of paper. Let's see how many you could remember. Number one, your supplier needs to maintain hygienic standards so that the food is uncontaminated when you receive it. Number two, in everything you do, the transference of bacteria from one area to another must be avoided. Number three, your personal hygiene must be perfect. Number four, food preparation areas must be clean and hygienic. Number five, food types must be separated and the correct equipment color should be coded. Number six, most importantly, clean as you go. Well done if you remembered all six of these points. If you missed one or two, have another look at the lesson until you know all of the ways that microbiological contamination can be prevented. Good luck.